Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today I'm going to be doing exactly what it says in the title of the video. I'm going to be describing Minolta's best ever film camera and that is of course the Minolta Alpha 9 also known as the Maxim 9 or Dynax 9 depending on which, con which country you live in. Uh, uh, and I'll go over the reasons why I say this is the, the best Minolta camera. Uh, the Minolta Alpha 9, I'm going to call it that for the rest of the video because that's what this particular one is called. Uh, it was released by Minolta in 1998, which is a very late time to produce a professional quality uh, 35mm film camera. Uh, largely because uh, digital cameras were already entering the marketplace and Nikon or Nikon as we call them here in Japan and Canon already had their digital pro SLR cameras in the works uh, primitive by today's standards but uh, cutting edge uh, by you know the standards of 1998 and uh, I, I, I'm quite surprised that this camera w was brought out. Uh, I was thinking, you know, it probably would have been wiser to take all the features and stuff in this camera and just put a digital sensor in it and, and sell it as a digital camera. And that's what uh, Minolta did with their Alpha 7, which was the junior, I guess, little brother of the Alpha 9. Uh, the Alpha 9 is what you get when you, you I guess, uh, question a lot of photographers and, and ask them to make a list of all the functions at which they would like in a professional camera and then you collect all these lists from all these photographers and you take every single item on all the lists and cram it into a one camera. Uh, this camera pretty much has everything you could imagine which a professional photographer would want. Uh, it has a wonderful autofocus system, a wide range of uh, shutter speeds, an incredible amount of exposure compensation, uh, easy and fast uh, controls, a very fast motor drive system. This thing can take uh, five and a half frames per second. An incredibly well laid out set of controls and functions. It's just an amazing machine. You know, this is a you know uh, an F1 racer uh, uh, of cameras. Uh, the only other comparable camera, of course, is the uh, Nikon F6, uh, which was uh, also you know Nikon's last uh, professional quality film camera. And uh, between that one and this one, it's kind of a toss-up which one is better. I like the layout and a lot of the functions on uh, the Minolta more than I than I like the F6. But on the other hand, the F6 has that F mount, which allows you to use both autofocus and manual focus lenses on it. Uh, the only limiting thing to this camera, which is a di which is a problem. Is the lens mount is uh, a Minolta A mount which of course uh, became the more modern Sony Alpha mount uh, unfortunately there you can't interchange the lenses between this particular one and uh, you know the latest uh, Sony A mount lenses and the, you know the lens assortment is rather limited on this camera compared to the manual focus uh, uh, models uh, on the other hand for uh, 90 some percent of us, the lenses which were made available for this camera are completely adequate. There's a good range of wide angle, normal, short telephoto on telephoto lenses and pretty much all you would, most people would need for taking photographs. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls and functions of this camera. And first I'm going to just show you the outside of the camera uh, and just uh, how amazingly well this camera was laid out. And how you can tell it was uh, just made to be a shooting tool for professional photographers. Uh, everything is just where it should be when you're uh, trying to operate a camera. All the buttons, all the dials, all the controls, uh, everything is just where, where you'll find it easily with your fingers. Uh, it's very easy to grip here. We have the dials here for adjusting things like the shutter speed and aperture like on the more modern uh, pro level cameras when you're shooting this in a in manual mode. Uh, we have two different shutter buttons. If you're using the, the standard uh, without the grip you can use the standard button up here and if you turn it on the side you end up with almost the identical feeling grip here uh, with a shutter button and also with the dials on the front and back. Uh, you have the AF and AE locks here located by your thumbs and if you're shooting it in this uh, mode, the portrait mode, they're in the same position. It's, it's, it's an amazing piece of machinery. On the top here, of course, we have the important stuff. First, we have the exposure compensation dial here, which you can uh, uh, add or subtract a couple of stops of uh, uh, exposure compensation. And this is when I, I've mentioned this before in previous videos. If you're shooting uh, something on the snow and you want the snow to uh, look white, you can increase the compensation. If you're shooting someone wearing a black dress, you can decrease the exposure compensation. That way, white looks white and black looks black. 
The dial under here is flash compensations. You're actually allowed, to, you're, you're able to uh, uh, compensate for uh, a different flash, which is quite an amazing feature. And being able to do it here just on the top of the camera is, is quite easy. And these cameras were very popular with shooting pros here in Japan, particularly uh, wedding photographers. The, these were a, a real hit with those. And uh, of course, they generally use flash and the flash capability on this camera is one of the things which made it popular with them. Now over here we have a couple of more controls. Here we have uh, uh, the, the main switch on the top here which changes the modes. We have manual, uh, shutter, uh, shutter priority, aperture priority, uh, full manual at the end and of course we have program where the camera chooses the best possible aperture and shutter speed. Below that we have uh, the drive ring which allows you to uh, choose from a variety of options. We have a bracketing option and this uh, allows the camera to take multiple exposures at uh, different exposure levels to get the best possible results you know it wastes a lot of film but you will get uh, you know better negatives out of it we have the standard one sta uh, the standard drive with uh, single and continuous as i said up to 5.5 frames per second and we have the self timer and uh, memory mode uh, on the back here we have the on off switch so i'm holding it upside down uh, here we have the viewfinder with a diopter adjustment and a, a shutter for closing it. You can kind of hear it as I, as I move my fingers across the eye sensor. When the camera is turned on and you lift up your eye here uh, and you have the camera pointed at, a, at your subject, it will focus it. We have the AE lock here. We have the AF uh, button here. We have a selector switch here for the uh, metering modes. We have uh, center weighted spot and uh, full field. And of course, uh, we have a light switch here, which will allow you to illuminate the LED readout. The LED readout shows the important things like the uh, uh, shutter speed, aperture, battery condition, film counter, and uh, uh, and also if you you know it will indicate the exposure compensation. There's a little hidden door here on the side, which has some really interesting features. Uh, this allows you uh, for uh, you know, to control the data which is imprinted on the camera, and also to manually rewind the film. Normally, when you reach the last uh, uh, frame and you fire it, the camera will rewind it automatically. But if you're someone who wants to change a film in the middle of a roll, so you want to change to a higher speed film for shooting in the dark, or change to uh, uh, negative film to slide film you can use this button here to rewind it and it has a feature where you can uh, in, in the, the you can change the mode where it will rewind the film but leave the film lead out so you can reload the film and run it back to where it was before uh, a really super feature uh, on the back here we have some switches we have what is called the eye start which you can switch on or off and that activates the eye sensor here we have some uh, flash control uh, settings. We have the red eye, regular flash, and then rear flash. And we have a switch for wireless control of the flash, which was a, quite a cool thing. And even today, that's a, a pretty interesting feature. Uh, this camera features a built-in flash, which you turn on by simply pulling up. And also you can see the uh, uh, flash, flash, I guess, uh, status inside the uh, LED readout. In the viewfinder here, we have a, a system, a, a focus verification system, very similar to what you find on the Nikon or Nikon cameras. For shooting in manual mode, there's a, a meter readout on the right, uh, which will move up and down. And what you do is you adjust the controls, the uh, shutter speed and aperture to center these. And, uh, and of course, the uh, focus modes. And the focus was the, the, the key selling point to this camera because it was an incredibly advanced system. It had uh, the, the, the regular focus, predictive focus, full field focus uh, and it, it's it's just an incredible system and predictive focus means like you're uh, you're filming uh, race cars or uh, people running or whatever the camera will predict where a moving object will be at the you know at a certain time you know, like when you're uh, shooting with uh, the motor drive it's going to certain times per second so it will know you know when the, the subject is in focus and it will fire the shutter at that moment in order to get a moving object in the best focus and speaking of the the shutter this camera featured a maximum shutter speed of 1 12,000th of a second, which is uh, ridiculously high and really wonderful for catching uh, and freezing uh, action shots, especially if you're using one of the, the faster lenses. You're you know, filming uh, you know, uh, uh, your kids playing or throwing a ball or playing peak ping pong or something like that uh, a really good feature for that and also a maximum shutter speed of 30 seconds so it's really good for really long exposures uh, taking pictures in the dark or astrophotography or things like that another cool thing about this camera is the 
the metal construction on the front, which is uh, it. it I, I love the sculpted look of the metal, the way you know, the way it's shaped, and uh, it, it was very unique when it came out. There wasn't anything quite like it, I, and uh, uh, it, it just. And if you get one of the titanium versions, the metal of the camera is titanium instead of the uh, cast. Uh, I think if it's uh, I can't remember if it's a zinc or most of the cameras are cast zinc or uh, or was it magnesium? But uh, yeah, I, I love that you know, you know, especially with all the plastic stuff which comes out today, to have something this looks like it's all plastic, but around the front it's mostly metal. Uh, on the front here we have a stop down button which stops down the aperture. You can see it stopping down as I push it. Uh, over here we have the switch for switching off and off the autofocus. We have a autofocus selector switch. We have, of course, single, automatic, and continuous. And then we've, we have the button here which you depress for uh, uh, removing the, the lens. Uh, another cool thing about this camera is the, the battery system. You can use the uh, CR123 lithium batteries, and those fit in the bottom if I take off the cover like so and you would fit the two batteries inside here another really clever thing about this camera and a thing which solves an issue which earlier cameras have is this cool battery cover when you use the camera with just the, the internal batteries you can use this cover and when you're putting on the the battery pack uh, you just leave it open like that and the contacts here uh, fit inside. So a lot of the, an issue with a lot of the older cameras is they had a removable cap which you had to take off and and stick somewhere inside you know inside a holder or something like that and invariably these get lost and then the, the replacements are quite expensive. This is an, I guess this is one of the most ingenious things I've seen and it's, it's you know like you, you know, other makers say why didn't I think of something like that that's it's too simple it's just too good of an idea. And a cool thing about this is the battery options inside the battery pack. You can use these different kinds of batteries. Uh, you can use the uh, two CR5 batteries, uh, which uh, can be fit sideways in the battery holder. You can fit four uh, uh, AA batteries. And of course, as I mentioned, this one here uses the uh, CR123A uh, battery. So three different kinds of batteries you can use in this camera and all of them will work. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite amazing. And I guess it, it took them until 1998 to, uh, for someone to come up with the idea that maybe those little removable battery covers on the bottom of the camera uh, weren't such a good idea after all. Uh, yeah, I, it, it, it's, yeah I, I, if I had an hour to make this video, I probably wouldn't be able to cover all the things which, uh, which this camera can do. It's just that wonderful of a piece of machinery. And uh, uh, I, I got this the other day in the mail, and uh, you know the guy sent me pictures of it. And it looked really nasty in the pictures, and it was, I guess he wasn't, despite he was selling cameras, he wasn't a very good uh, photographer. When I got the camera, just dusting it off, it came out, and it, it, it looks like, you know, it, it, it looks quite beautiful. Uh, this thing does have a little bit of, uh, you can see some of the uh, Minolta, I guess, um, evolution in this camera. One thing you'll notice is these metal contacts on the front here. And when you touch these, this kind of lets the camera know that it's being held and will switch on uh, the, the, you know, the camera and make it uh, you know, ready to shoot. And of course, there's the eye sensor, which uh, does the same thing. And uh, this is kind of uh, uh, from the old X1 series, which is called in, you know, something else in other markets, where when you pick up the camera, your fingers push down on the meter switch and turn it on. Uh, this meter switch was a kind of a nightmare because it always broke or had issues and things like that. And, uh, and uh, some people just taped it so it was down all the time. But um, uh, at least this system works. Uh, weaknesses with this camera are mainly cosmetic. Mechanically, it's a solid camera, which very seldom has problems with it. The only issues which you might run into it are uh, one of these cameras, which has been put away for a number of years, and the batteries have been leaking on the inside and causing corrosion, which is really not a good thing to have in an electronic camera. And another thing, as I said, is cosmetic. The rubber used uh, around, especially the grip, uh, tends to deteriorate. I think it's the interaction between like the acid or oils uh, in your skin and it gets into the uh, rubber here and it breaks down and then sometimes it comes off in pieces and chunks and I've seen some of these cameras where there's just no rubber left on it at all and uh, luckily uh, this one came uh, in very good condition and with no damage on the rubber. I was really surprised to see uh, how nice a camera this was. 
But anyway, uh, this, this video is getting long and I've got to get back home in time for dinner. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end it here. Uh, for those of you who are interested in buying this camera, I'll be listing it in my uh, Etsy store later on tonight. Uh, I have a couple of other Minolta cameras, uh, XGS cameras. I got uh, two really nice examples of those. I'll be listing those as well, uh, as well as a lot of other interesting stuff which came in this week. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in buying this camera or uh, something else, uh, uh, please visit my online stores, my Etsy store, and you'll see uh, what I have. Uh, next week, I'm going to be out of town for a few days. Uh, so for those of you who order or have ordered cameras from my shop, um, I'll try to get everything out before I leave. But uh, if you've ordered cameras uh, after I leave, uh, it might take an extra three or four days for, before them before they arrive. Uh, I won't be home to ship them and I won't be able to ship them till I get back. So they'll probably show as pre-transit for uh, longer than uh, normal. Uh, and uh, luckily shipping is getting a little bit better now after the, the delays we had in January from the air disaster at Haneda Airport that caused a lot of delays and I guess the uh, shipping and customs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that seems to be working out well and things are uh, back up to speed now. So uh, looking good. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, after I return from uh, my holiday, and by the way, I'm going to New York, so I'm probably you know, go and see how expensive things have gotten since the last time I visited. Uh, hopefully it's not too cold there, but um, yeah, that's where I'll be for uh, until the uh, end of uh, next week. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll make a video there if I can uh, find something interesting to make a video of. And uh, yeah, of course, I'll make more camera videos when I return. So uh, if you haven't subscribed already and you want to see them, please subscribe. Uh, if you uh, like the video, uh, please click the like button. That always helps. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.